Hello, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for attending our session, LLM-powered agents with Kubernetes. We're excited to be presenting here today at KubeCon AI Day, and we hope you enjoy this session. I'm Hema Viradi, currently working as a data scientist in the Emerging Technologies team at Red Hat. I'm currently working remotely from the Bay Area, California, and if you wish to connect with me, you can find me on LinkedIn as Hema Viradi. And join with me today is my colleague, Shrey. Hi, everyone. I'm Shrey Anand, principal data scientist at Red Hat. I'm based off from Toronto, Canada. So if you want to reach out, feel free to reach out uh, at LinkedIn. Awesome. So in today's talk, we want to quickly give you a brief introduction to large language models, followed by an introduction to RAG systems. And then, of course, the main uh, topic for today is LLM-powered agents. So we're going to dive a little bit into what exactly are agents, their different use cases, and also go through a cool demo wherein we kind of showcase the feasibility and the features of what you can do with LLM agents. So to get started, I know most of us in this room may have already an idea about what large language models are, or they have interacted with it at some point in the past one and a half years of its inception. So don't want to spend too much time on it, but just to give a brief overview for those of you who are new, large language models are nothing but computational models that are capable of generating or modeling the human language. And LLMs, shortly named, have the transformative ability to predict the next likelihood of word sequences based on a given input text that it's been provided. So if you look at this um, animated GIF over here, if I give it an input like, I like cats more than, it's going to kind of predict based on, based on its existing set of text as well as tokens, as we call it. And based on the existing data set that it's been trained on, it's going to kind of come up with what is the most likely semantically similar word that can come next based on these input tokens or text that's been provided. So it's going to go ahead and say, I like cats more than dogs. So this is a very brief and very high level explanation of what LLMs are. But based on what they are capable of doing, they are pretty much good at a lot of natural language processing tasks. For example, they're good at text generation, code generation tasks, and as more popularly being used right now, they're good at chatbots and conversational AI assistants. They're also good at information retrieval as well as sentiment analysis. Now, LLMs are pretty good at NLP tasks. However, they can be pretty bad at certain complex or more logical type of tasks. For example, they cannot probably answer a lot of puzzles or riddles or even complex mathematical uh, problems given. This is because of their limited reasoning capability. And they are good knowledge retrievers, but they are not good reasoners. LLMs also lack dynamicity in the sense that they are static and they are unable to access real-time information. So for example, if you were to ask it any inputs about what is the current latest affairs or news or even events that are happening based on your geolocation, based on your neighborhood, it may not always give you the most accurate and up-to-date to the second type of information that you would require it to have. And lastly, they also tend to hallucinate, as most of you all might have seen this. This is because of their limited knowledge. So they're basically trained on a vast set of data, but they may lack up-to-date world knowledge, and because of which they tend to hallucinate or give you some outdated information based on its existing data that it's been uh, trained on. Now, luckily for us, to overcome some of these standalone limitations of these LLMs, we have been introduced to RAG, which is nothing but retrieval augmented generation. And this has emerged as a powerful approach to enhance the accuracy and the relevance of your large language models. RAG combines information retrieval techniques along with generative AI, allowing the systems to fetch relevant documents or any sources of information based on a user's query. And then they will use the LLM to generate and stitch back the final response to the user. 
So this setup makes RAG systems highly effective for tasks like delivering real-time information and providing contextual answers based on up-to-date sources of information. And by grounding their responses in those specified retrieved documents that you provided, it's also able to reduce hallucinations to some extent. And additionally, they enhance the information retrieval by accessing this database or this document repository where you've kind of stored all these latest and greatest up-to-date uh, information or your own internal research documents or your own internal company documents, which may not be available generically for these large language models on the uh, training data set that it's been trained on. So this ensures that the answers are not just accurate, but they're also based on those do domain-specific data sets that you are providing to it internally. So this is the capability of RAG. And now we've come and stepped into the era of agents. So while RAG extend the capabilities of LLMs by allowing them to index the data outside of its training data, LLM agents were introduced to further enhance the LLM's capability by allowing it to interact with external sources or tools. So RAG focuses on integrating external knowledge to improve the accuracy and the response, whereas the agent focuses on complex reasoning and planning tasks. And they are specifically designed to take actions and make intelligent decisions. So typically, an LLM agent comprises of the LLM as its main backbone or the computing agent, along with the access to all the various tools that you provide it, and also the state. So it's having a memory component as well, so that it can keep track of all the different tools that it's talking to, all the different decisions it's making, and finally giving back the output to the user. So as we can see here, the LLM can be your choice of uh, any preferred uh, large language model that you would like to interact with. The tools are nothing but anything that you can think of that you would want the agent to talk to, from API services to your own custom-defined functions that's maybe calculating a customer account's revenue, or it's even just predicting the weather. You can basically make it talk to any of these different type of sources that you would like it to interact with. And then finally, as we saw, the memory component of it to keep track of the different tools that it's interacting with. So let's look at the components a little more closely with an example. Let's say as an input, as a user, you are asking the agent, hey, can you look up at the sky today? And can you tell me if it's going to rain tomorrow? If yes, hand me an umbrella so that I'm prepared. Now, for answering these type of questions, the agent not just needs to give an accurate response, but it also needs a lot of inputs and signals in the sense that it needs to know what's the geolocation of this user, what's the current time of day, what are the different weather patterns, or what are the different, uh, let's say, web scrapers that it needs to pull up, and what are those tools that it has access to to help come up with that answer. So it has that LLM at the back end where it's talking to to figure out what decisions to make. And the main kind of magic where the agent takes its uh, main component is the planning. So the planning component is basically where your chain of thought algorithms are actually inbuilt, which is trying to mimic the human thought-like process. So this is where that planning component plays a crucial role in figuring out what are the right set of tools that I have access to, and how do I make the decision to solve this question that I've been provided. And then, of course, it also needs to have access to all the tools that are available for it to talk to. So whether it's an executable function, whether it's some external API that it needs to have access to, these are basically all those external sources that it's grabbing information from. And then finally, the memory where it's making all those thought uh, plans and it's figuring out the decisions that it needs to take. And lastly, it, once it has come up with the right decision, it goes ahead and makes the appropriate action to execute for that particular user. So there are many different types of LLM agents that you can choose from, depending upon the nature of use case that you are trying to solve. 
You can have reactive agents. You can have rule-based agents. You can also have single and multi-agents. Let's say you have a set of agents that you would like to talk to, and each of those agents are talking to its own specific set of tools. So it becomes a very complex architecture if you think about it, but those are kind of the capabilities that these agents are allowing us to kind of build out these uh, Gen AI applications today. Lucky for us, there are some existing tools and frameworks like Langchain, IBM's B agent framework, which is open source, and then there are a couple of other enterprise uh, agent frameworks that exist as of today that you can take a look at. So for us, we've kind of looked at two different agents. One is a very simple one, which is a router-based agent, wherein it's a rule-based type of agents where it has a predefined set of rules that it needs to take in order to come up with the right tool that it needs to select. So we give it some example questions saying, for these set of questions, go to tool A. For these set of questions, go to tool B. So it's a more um, a simple approach wherein you've given those predefined rules and the routes for the agent to take versus a more intelligent approach, which is what we have explored, which is the React agent, which is nothing but reasoning and acting. So here, this is where that human thought-like process comes into the picture. There are no predefined rules here. It's all about the agent trying to make that decision for this type of query. These are the access to the tools that I have. Maybe I need to do a combination of tools. Maybe I get one part of the answer from this tool, combine it with another tool. So that's where it goes through this iterative feedback loop to kind of come up with that intelligent decision. And Shrey will talk about a use case where he's going to explain how we implemented this and uh, go through a cool demo as well. Awesome. Thanks, Hima. Um, so now that we know what agents are and like what tools are, we will switch to a use case and a live demo. OK. So the use case here is about a fictional cloud company called CloudForge Dynamics that has several departments and is looking to have a unified chat uh, assistant for its employees to answer queries across the departments. So Red Hat has several departments, and for each of the departments, we have several documents. And um, one way we can interact with those documents is through like different chatbots for different employees uh, and different use cases, but having one single place one unified experience for all of those different documents is a use case that can, sol that can be solved with an LLM agent. So um, we are using a React agent that Hema just explained about. And in this fictional example, we have three different uh, departments. So one is the products department, one is the HR department, and one is customer's accounts de department. And the job of the LLM agent is to route to the right department's documents. So when a user comes in and asks a question, where should the questions be asked to? Um, this is the application that we have deployed on our OpenShift cluster. OpenShift is enterprise Kubernetes. And uh, in a bit, I'm going to show the back end of this application. So um, I'm going to enter some prompts here, and I have some example queries. So the first query is, what does the CloudForge migrate product do? And when I click on the Ask button, it's going to start generate the answer. And it worked. So CloudForge Migrate is a cloud migration platform that simplifies the process of moving applications, data, and infrastructure, and so on. So um, in the back end, what's really going on is um, a sequence of steps that we trace through MLflow, which is also deployed on our cluster. MLflow helps us to track our experiments and um, the back end of whatever's going in the application. So 27 seconds ago, I created this trace where the React agent was called. And um, the input was the question that I entered, and the output was the final response. If I go into the first runnable sequence here, I can just increase the font a little bit. 
maybe. Yeah. So um, if we look at the intermediate steps, we see here in the log that the agent has this thought where it says, do I need to use a tool? And then the answer to that is yes. And the action is call the product assistant. So I asked a question about the specific product, and the agent decided to call the product assistant. If I go here and click on the product assistant tool, then um, I will see the input as CloudForge Migrate, which was the query, and the output as the context uh, extracted from the RAG tool. So this tool is basically a RAG vector base, retrieval augmented generation tool for a vector base. And then whenever a query comes in, it will um, search the vector base for the right um, excerpt and return it back to the agent. So if I go to the final step, here the agent will look at the output from the RAG tool and then create the final answer that we see um, on our app. So that's one of the queries, and um, I have a couple of more, which I can go ahead and try here. So the second, is, the second query is about HR things that an employee needs to do, and they're asking this question from this chatbot. So here, um, the expected behavior is that it will go into um, the tool which does the HR, uh, like HR things. So here the input is what HR things should I do before the start date. And then um, if I look at the runnable sequence, there is a thought to use a tool called the HR assistant. The HR assistant will return a bunch of uh, text excerpts and the agent will then use that to create the final answer. And uh, finally, the last query is about one of the customers of our company, Finova Bank, and we want to know the total payments received from this bank. And um, this time, the agent will go to the account assistant tool, so it gets the final answer, which is $782,000. It will go, um, so the latest query is tracked here. Five minutes. And it decides to call the accounts assistant tool, which is the final tool um, that we have access to. And finally, it will use it to create the answer that we just saw. So that was basically the live demo. And I'm going to quickly show the architecture in brief of how this is happening. So a user comes up with a query to the UI. The UI calls the agent. That then um, sends the query to the LLM. So it sends the query to the LLM. The LLM has to decide which tool should it call. So the agent has access to the product tool, the HR tool, and the customer rack tool. LLM decides based on the query which rack tool should be called. And uh, like we saw, it would call the right tool uh, when you ask about relevant information from that tool. On the tool services side of things, when you get a question about the product, it will go into the vector database and um, look for the exact excerpt of that particular query. So example, we talked about the Mi CloudForge Migrate product. So it will go into the vector database, look for uh, that particular information, and then give it back to the agent. So once the agent has access to that information, it can create the final answer. So that, that's like a very simplistic architecture. Um, one of the things that I also wanted to show was the repository. So all of this is open sourced, and it's, the repository is called LLM Agents. 
and we have um, for each of those agent, uh, architecture components, we have like deployment files um, that you can use to deploy this on your own cluster and try it out. So for the rack tools, we have um, the vector database deployment, uh, the endpoint deployments, and some example um, testing code here. Similarly, for the agent, we have the OpenShift or, or Kubernetes deployment files, the tool parsing and the agent source code all in the repository. So we encourage anyone who wants to contribute or have questions or wants to raise issues and PR, PRs to like co communicate with us through this repository. Um, getting back to some discussion points and conclusion. So one of the ways to solve this problem of unified chat assistant is through agent routing. And what this also enables us is that right now we just call these different rag tools. However, we can also have a multi-agent system where this routing agent here, instead of calling a rag tool, it will call other agents and then um, collaborate with them to generate the final response. So for example, there can be a product agent that um, has access to the RAG tool. So you can get RAG queries for your product documents, but it can also have a support tool. So if uh, you want some sort of support assistant, you can build that in the product agent. And now the routing agent will talk to the product agent, which specializes in the product and it will use response from the product agent to show on the UI. So, um, I think we have one minute left. Okay, so the final concluding remarks to just sum up all the key points in this talk. LLMs are awesome, but they need RAG for grounding. Um, LLMs plus RAG pattern is awesome, but it needs agents framework for planning and interacting with external sources. So if you, if you have complex use cases that requires those things, you will need to onboard some sort of an agent framework and agent approach. Having said all of that, there are challenges with the agent's approach. So as you saw that we were calling different APIs and uh, rack tools, deb debugging the system becomes difficult because there are like many different fault points. Um, so the agent, needs to know what is the right tool and what are the right input parameters for that tool. And so because of this, the latency of responses also is high because you have to call so many APIs. The more complex your system is, the chances are latency will become high. And then there's also like load balancing and security concerns because you are essentially um, asking your query from external tools, so you have to manage those security concerns. So that was it. Uh, we have the repository in the QR code here. We also have our email IDs if you have questions. But if you have like a couple of minutes, we'll take any questions now. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, just wondering if um, you have any insight on what type of agent frameworks work better for like backend agent operations for managing backend, or, or sorry, yeah, like backend things in your, in your product versus like front-facing chatbots? Any, any agent frameworks that do better one or the other? So we've explored predominantly Langchain at the moment. Um, although, as I said, like I listed out a couple of more that we're, we're, we're also kind of doing like a comparison to see. And uh, yes, we are trying to implement this as a backend for our own um, internal Slack. So Slack is basically the, the user um, interface that's going to be there for our employees. But to make those routing layers, uh, we are going to have this at the back end, which will be mostly um, on top of Langchain for now. But I think uh, we're also seeing a lot of new frameworks like um, the B agent framework. There's also like this uh, open, uh, open AI, open platform. I think that's the name, the, the correct name. You'll have to look it up. 
But yeah, there are tons of new frameworks out there. It's, a, it's really about the, the different features that each of those frameworks have. Like some of them also have their own logging, wherein you can log the traces. We were using MLflow because that's our choice, but some of them have those inbuilt metrics and inbuilt uh, functionalities that you can leverage. But yeah, I would say at the moment, we've only explored like one or two uh, to kind of get a feel of it. Yeah. And just to add to that, um, at the core, these agents are calling tools. And that all of that happens in the back end. So um, if your requirement is such that you need multiple APIs to be called in the back end, then um, that core functionality would be available across the frameworks. Yeah. So you can use that as a, as a user-facing chatbot or for your internal application where you're using it in the back end. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.